And so, this Sabbath, I go to get my clothes, right? And she's got this shirt here, right? And, and it's like, it's two sizes too small, but I'm like, I'm not even going to pick out a different shirt, right? So, I'm wearing this shirt. I just want you to know that I know I'm wearing a shirt that's two sizes too small because I love my wife, okay? <laughs> I love my wife. So, I, you know, I know it. I know it. You know, John's already got on me. Your shirt's getting a little small, ain't it? I know. I hadn't worn it since high school. Uh, I couldn't even button. Anyway, so I'm not crazy. I'm, it's not a new fashion statement. I just, I want you to know. But em embarrassingly enough, I'm ashamed to say this. It, it, it's, it's really, I hate it. I hate it. I mean, it's embarrassing. But I have been getting a lot of complaints on my sermons. A lot of people have been complaining about things that I say. And uh, I'm going to try to do better. But uh, there are three. I've narrowed them down. I get so many complaints, groups, that I've narrowed them down to three of them. And before, I'm not going to mention any names. Wouldn't dare. But I do, I do want to mention one name because I want to clear her. Glenda has not complained about anything. <laughs> but I get three complaints. And I've narrowed them down to three things. One of them is that I preach over. And I'm going to try to be done today by noon. That I preach over too much, too much time. And the other complaint is that I preach too much on the coming of Jesus. That I'm always talking about Jesus is coming soon, coming soon, coming soon, coming soon. And I need to hush and I do preach that Jesus, about the love of Jesus. More about the love of Jesus and less about the coming of Jesus. And then the other complaint is that I joke around too much. That I shouldn't be up here joking around and I should be more serious. Now, all three of those things are deep-rooted personality traits of mine. But I'm going to try to serve you well. Um, and I appreciate those of you who bring those things out. Thank you for pointing that. That helps me be better at serving you. So I want to, I want to thank you for that. And, uh, and I appreciate it. And so I'm going to try to get through the sermon today. And it's about pancakes and no eggs. Pancakes and no eggs. And I don't like eggs. How many of you like eggs? How many of you don't like eggs? Are you go, Marisha? That's right. That's right, girl. Eggs ain't... <clears throat> Sorry. That's right. Eggs aren't too good. And I don't like them boiled. I don't like them fried. I don't like them scrambled. I don't like them. I just don't like them. I don't care for them. If I absolutely have to eat them, I like them just the egg whites scrambled. And I eat white scrambled eggs if I just have to eat them. And I do like pancakes. And something that I've noticed is, you know, on every street corner they got a waffle house. Okay, a waffle's not a pancake. On every street corner, they got a Waffle House. If you want to go to IHOP, you got to drive halfway across the country, you know. So, I noticed that. And so, I, I, the thing about it is, is the devil has a counterfeit for everything. And I think he's even counterfeited eggs for pancakes. Let me explain. I'll, I'll get to there. I hope, I hope I can get to there. I've got ten minutes. <clears throat> but I want you to turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 31. Genesis 1.31. And it says here in Genesis 1.31, it says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. He's talking about the world and all the animals and all the mountains and everything that he had made, and it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And then it says here in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all of his work that he had made. Now God made everything in six days. He made it all. And then after he worked, made it all, it says that it was finished. He was finished. It was finished. And after he was finished, it says then he rested. He made this great work. And it, and it actually says that it is very good. Very good. And where I used to work, we, we had a... The guy that was over the place, sometimes when you did things, he would say, good job, good job. And we would, we would, we would brag about those kudos. We would say, we'd say, what did he say? And we'd say, he said that I did good job, good job. But every now and then, every now and then, you would go in there and, and you look at the project that you was working on, and he would look over it, and he would say, very good, 
Very good. And then we would go and brag. We would say, I got a very good. Very good is what I've got. And so God looked at the world that he had made and how he made it and everything in those six days. And he said it was very good. Very good. He's done an excellent job. But most of us here, we know the story that Satan come in there and there was some stuff that went on between Adam and Eve and, and they failed, they failed to, to sin. And Satan messed God's world up. Messed it all up. Thorns and thistles and all those things that weren't there. Animals that used to come up and lions and tigers and bears that you could probably pet and now they were a savage beast. And I want you to go with me to the book of John. The Gospel of John chapter 1 there. And in John chapter 1, I want you to look at John chapter 1, and we're going to go to verse uh, 14, I believe it is. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John chapter 1, verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 14. And it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten, of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay? So the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now what was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory? What, what, what is that? What could that have been? Jesus. There's only one answer for that. Jesus was made flesh. He dwelt among us and we beheld His glory. The Word is Jesus. And so here in John chapter 1, verse 1, that same chapter, John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. So we know we're talking about Jesus. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In the very beginning, Jesus was there with God. And it says here in verse 3, it says, All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. That means that Jesus made the world. Jesus made the world. Jesus made the trees and the flowers and the bees and the people and Adam and Eve. And Jesus made all those things. Nothing was made that was made that was not made through Him. Jesus was the Creator. We miss that a lot of times. Jesus was, was, he was the Creator. He was with God. He was God. And, and, and everything was created through Jesus. And it was very good. But Satan managed to pull man astray and mess it up. Mess it all up. And you say, well, Quentin, what does that have to do with pancakes? And I want you to know that it has everything to do with pancakes. If you go to the book of Exodus chapter 16, and, and I, I won't read all of that, but in the book of Exodus chapter 16, we get the story of the manna. And those people are out there, and they're fixing to die in the desert. They're going to starve. They can't make it. And so God gives them manna. And he gives them manna for six days. And in six days, they can go out, they gather the manna, right? And they can eat what they gather. But, and during those six days, if they gather anything extra, when they put it up, it stinks and it rots. It's got worms in it. Now, that's not natural. You go get some light bread and you take it home with you, or even a biscuit or anything, and the next day it's not stinking with worms. God did that. But on Friday evening, on the sixth day, God says you can collect double. You can get double manna. And if you did that, on the next day on the Sabbath, well, he says don't go out and collect it on the Sabbath. And on the next day on the Sabbath, the bread was saved and it was good. It was pure. It did not see corruption. Now, when we come to the New Testament, what we we're looking at today, and what Michael read to you, Jesus says, I, I'm, I'm that bread. I'm the bread that has came down to heaven for you so that you can survive and have eternal life. See, God is a winner. Jesus is a winner. You know, when Storm was a little kid in his stroller, and it's not, not stroller, but the, the thing that they stand in, it's got the bars and they sleep in it. What's that? Crib. Okay. He was in his crib, and he had this thing. He'd be playing with a ball or a teddy bear. He'd be playing with it, and it would fall out. And he would look at me, and he would cry. And I would go get it, and I'd put it back in there. And he'd take it and throw it out. And he'd look at me, and he would cry. And I'd go get it, and I'd put it back in there. And he would throw it out. And he would look at me, and he would cry. And I'd say, uh-uh. Right? Uh-uh. When he got older, when he got older, he got, he got a car. He got this Toyota car, and he got it, and it started smoking and burning oil. 
And so I ordered him a new engine, not a new engine, it was a used engine. 30,000 miles, it says. I ordered it off the internet. Got that engine dropped off at the house. I swapped the engine out, put that engine, 30,000 mile engine, put it in his car. He drives it for a while, it gets time to change the oil. We change the oil, and I, I notice it's a quart low. I go around back of the car, I'm looking at the bumper and stuff, there's blow up where, where it's been blowing oil out of the tailpipes. So he said, I'd be furious. I was. I was very upset. But I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to uh, take that motor that was in that other car, the, the, original, the first motor. I said, I'm going to just rebuild it myself and put it. So I'm rebuilding that motor. I'm just about finished rebuilding that motor. He calls me up. He says, Dad, I'm up under a 18-wheeler truck on the interstate, and, and I'm wrecked. So get that. Bring the car home. It's just a jumbled up mess. I said, well, we've got a perfect motor here. We've got to find us a body. So we went and found a body. Luckily, found a body with one that was just like it, but the engine was blown up. Put that new motor in there. He's got like practically a new car. Yeah. He calls me one night. He says, Dad, I'm in a ditch. Huh? I'm in a ditch. Where are you at? You know? I'm like, where are you? I'm, he's always in some, off in some stick somewhere. I don't know where I'm at. Or, where, what state are you in? Where are you? We get him home, put new fenders on it, new hood on it. He drives it. It wasn't long. He calls me again. He says, Dad, I've wrecked my car. It's a couple months later, Dad, I've wrecked my car. You know, whatever. It's a tow truck. Brings it home. Drops off in the yard. The, the wheel, the front wheels are all crumpled up under it. All shot. I dig all that out from under there. I put all that stuff back on new front end line, everything. Redo all of that. Lights, everything. Put it back together. He drives it. Gets in again. And it wasn't long. He was in Huntsville. He calls me one night. He says, Dad. He says, I just hit some guy in the rear end. I'm down here in Huntsville. I just hit some guy in the rear end. It was raining. He said, I hit my brakes. I slid. Hit him in the rear end. Told him a car out. So we call a truck, get a tow truck, bring it home, drops it off in the yard. And <clears throat> he says, what are we going to do? I said, you going to find you something else to drive because I ain't fixing it. A couple days later, he calls me. He says, Dad, he says, Dad, I was talking to so-and-so, and, and so-and-so says that car can be fixed. I said, honey, I know it can be fixed. I ain't fixing it. I'm done with that car, okay? I didn't think, and I didn't think nobody ever noticed that. But after, after my son passed, my neighbor come over, and he was talking to me. He lives right beside me. He's actually a diesel mechanic. Love him to death. He says, you know, he says, something I noticed about you. He said, I've seen that boy's car come home on a trailer at least 12 times. He said, it would go in your garage for a while. A couple of weeks, it'd come back out looking good. He said, it wouldn't be a couple weeks later, he'd come back home on the truck again. <laughs> he said, I watched you rebuild that car over and over and over. And I said, amen. Right? And I said, it's sitting there. I'm not doing it anymore. But now Jesus is not like that. Jesus is not like that. Jesus is not like that. He built this perfect world. It was perfect. Everything was perfect. All the people were perfect. He, he had it where he wanted it. And sin entered and messed it up. But Jesus says, you know what? Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. I'm going to go back. I'm going to fix it again. I'm going to do it right. And so Jesus came, right? And, 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 and he walked and he lived a perfect life in the face of the devil. Adam fell, but not me. They ate the fruit, but not me. Jesus passed in every way, shape, form, passion, any sin they threw at him. The Bible tells us that, that there is no sin that he was not tempted with, that, 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 that man is tempted with. He was tempted with all of it. When you hear all those problems and all those situations and all those hard times in life, and you think Jesus don't know what this, this is like, well, Jesus does know what that's like. He can identify with you. That's the reason we have a compassionate God and a compassionate Savior. He knows what it's like. He knows how you feel, and he knows what he's, you're going through. He can identify with you, and that's Jesus. And he gave his life on the cross. And he said he was the bread of life. There's a lot to that. You know, every day you had to go out and get fresh bread. And every day we want to be Christians. And every day when we wake up, we need to submit ourselves and eat and feed on the bread every day. Daily we need to be with Jesus. We've got to have it every day. You can't save it up. I don't have to read the Bible today. I don't have to pray today because I prayed extra hard yesterday. It don't work that way. And when Jesus went to the tomb, his body didn't see corruption. It tells us that in the book of Acts, that Jesus' body didn't see corruption, and he was resurrected. See, he finished his work. He even died on the cross, and on the cross, he said he knew that he had lived a perfect life. The work had been done. He had won the world back, and he had fixed what was wrong. And he said, it is finished. And when Jesus said, it is finished, he fixed it back. 
He took what was wrinkled up and broke up and thistled up and messed up and sinned up in a place where people had no hope, no nothing. It was over and it looked bleak and they had no Savior. And He came and He was that Savior and He became our sin for us and He, and he became the sin on the cross and He paid the penalty of all of our sins and He made a way where you can have eternal life in that world that He made to begin with. Jesus fixed what was wrong and when He was finished, He rested in the tomb on the Sabbath just like He did at the first. And He said, you know what? You're not changing anything. I'm going to do it all. I'm going to make the world. I'm going to fix it back. I'm going to fix what was wrong. And I'm going to rest on the same day. And the Sabbath is, is a memorial of what Jesus did just as much as it is a memorial of what God did. And then on the first day of the week on Sunday, Jesus resurrected. Do you think that Jesus couldn't have resurrected on Saturday? Jesus could have resurrected any time. But he waited. And he rested on the tomb on, on Saturday, on the Sabbath, and he arose on the first day of the week. And Jesus has gone to heaven, and he's working, he's finishing up. He's waiting on you to make a decision in your heart if you're going to change your life, if you're going to submit to his will, if you're going to follow him. He's waiting on you to make up your mind because he's merciful and long-suffering. And he's coming back. And he's going to come back, and he's going to make this world like it was in the beginning. And we're going to live forever and ever like Adam and Eve were intended to. In the, book of, in the Bible says in the book of Ahum chapter 1, Nahum chapter 1 verse 9, it says that sin will never again, affliction will never again occur. Not this time. He's going to fix it completely and fully and solidly. And I want to be there with Jesus. I want to be part of that and I want to have that. And I want you to be part of it too. And we've got this time once a year where everybody can come together and look at what Jesus has done for us and how much he loves us. And I'm glad to see you here today. Thank you guys. I love you. Let's sing our closing hymn. Number 166, Christ the Lord is risen today. Number 166.